On today's show, we are going to show you how to put together the X-axis as well as doing some work on the Z-axis of our DIY 3D printer. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. This is the show that explores the world of 3D printing. On today's show, we are diving back into our build. This is part five of our Prusa Bear Mark II build. Um, this is custom. Everything on this is custom made, um, with the exception, of course, the bed. But we do have a nice spool 3D magnetic surface on here with a PEI sheet. So we're going to talk about that in an upcoming episode. We've already talked about putting this on. Everything's working nice and smoothly, as we can see. Today, we want to talk about the Z and um, the X axis. And I have the X axis here. Now, on the X axis, you can see I've put it together. And I'm going to explain what I've done here. Um, we, go, we went ahead and obviously mounted the motor. We put in our bearings, and in this case, we're not using small LM8 UU bearings. We're using the long version. So there's only one bearing in here. And the reason that I like a single bearing, let's see if I can show that from the top. There we go. You can see that I've got one bearing here. Um, it's just a single bearing. It goes down about three quarters of the way down into this uh, channel here, and it keeps the rods from binding up by using a single bearing. If you have two bearings, what can happen sometimes is it can get bound up in there because they're not perfectly aligned. Now, you'll notice we are using uh, standard lead screw um, mounting hardware here, but what we've had to do, and I'll put, I'll, I'll take this apart for you in just a moment, is this is a Prusa STL right here for the idler end of your X carriage. Now this hole here is not a standard size. At least it's not for North America in, in any case. Uh, so what we've had to do is we went ahead and um, I had a friend of mine design these little bushings that fit right inside that existing hole. It does raise up your your lead screw nut a little bit, but it fits right inside there and you can drive your screws in and everything works nice and simply and it keeps everything aligned. The trick to it is, is making sure that this piece that we put on there is nice and flat against this surface. So if this is flat to this surface, this is going to be flat to this surface. These are available, and uh, when we do the bill of materials, there will be links for everything down in our description on the last video, and you'll get links to where to find all of this stuff. We'll put together a package so you know where everything is. Now, let's take a look at the, the carriage itself. Now, we're going to take it all apart here comes apart quite easily. I want to show you a couple of things that we've done. So as you know, we've got that bearing in there. Okay, so you can see we've got the bearing in there. We've got our lead screw nut. We can see there that it has the um, proper spacer that we need to keep that nut centered. We also have put in our idler pulley. And on this side, what we've done is we've put in a couple of M3 screws uh, there's nut traps on the top and on the bottom so that you can use these to adjust the length of your rods inside or along that uh, X axis so it fits properly on the Z and also provides proper tension to your belt. Let's go ahead and look at our um, extruder or pardon me, not extruder. Well, this is for the extruder, but also for the hot end. This is the back plane, and on the back of this, you can see that we've got three bearings. Now, this is the way the bearings would normally be in here. But what we've chosen to do is use a long, straight bearing like this. 
in this part, as I mentioned earlier. We didn't do it here because it doesn't quite fit. You can see it, it's just a little bit smaller than having those two bearings in there. And it would cause it to shift back and forth. And we didn't want that. Now, my only complaint about this STL is the fact that we're still using zip ties. And zip ties over time can wear out, they can, they can break, and you can have all kinds of problems. But the nice thing about this design is that these particular uh, zip straps, they actually go through the actual piece. So they're mounted in within the inside of this uh, piece for the X axis. So let's go ahead and put this together. We're gonna start with our motor section. And you can see here, everything's already been done. We've added our motor. We're just gonna turn that on its side. We're gonna take these rods and we're just going to mount them in there till they seat all the way down. Now when you are printing these parts, please make sure that you've got all of your um, support material out of those holes because if you don't, these rods will not sit even. And you can see that they are even there, somewhat, yes, they are even. Then we are going to add in our carriage. Now it's important that we add in this carriage properly. Because if we don't, if we get it backwards, we're going to have to take it all apart again. So what we want to do is we want to turn this in the orientation that we're going to see it on the printer. We're going to take that X carriage and we're just going to line these up and slide it on. And there we go. That's as simple as that is. And we're just going to allow that to drag right down. We're going to pop on the other end. And you're going to have to use a little bit of force till it bottoms out here. But it should be snug enough that that is all that we have to do. So let's uh, put that aside. We're going to come back to that in a second here. I want to talk a little bit about what we've done here. Now, on the Prusa machine, you will see that they have a lead screw that is attached actually to the motor. It's all part of the, the unit itself. What we've done is we've used um, solid couplers here. They're not spring couplers, they're solid. I mean, I could have used uh, a pancake motor with the lead screw on it, but I didn't see any need to having to do that. So we just went with this. We've got our eight mil rod here, it's slotted in. So here are our top pieces, and this keeps our rods, our Z-axis rods um, in place. Now you'll notice there's a small hole and a large hole. If we look underneath, you can see that the smaller hole actually is kind of countersunk here so that the smooth rod fits right in there and helps to keep it perfectly aligned. And then the larger hole has no bearing in it. Um, I typically like to use a bearing of mine. Of course, there's STLs out there that you can use a bearing to make sure that that Z-axis lead screw is always straight. Um, but for all intent and purposes, it's going to be fine for our build today. And on the back, we are using um, M5 uh, sliding T-nuts. That's what those are. Those are sliding T-nuts. And we've already installed them. All we have to do is go ahead, slide them in, and tighten them up. First and foremost, though, we have to put on our X-axis. All right. So we're going to go ahead and put our x-axis on first. And how we do that, I'm going to kind of do this backwards here, is we are going to line things up with the smooth rods. And I will look down on these, just so that I can get the smooth rods in there. And that looks quite level. And now I will start to turn the lead screws so that everything starts to drop down. Try and turn them as even as you can. We're going to cut here and we'll come back and I'll show you how to make sure that it's level to your bed. Okay, so what we've done is we've brought the x-axis down. We are now just going to adjust this up or down and then slide our machinist blocks 
underneath. Now you don't need machinist blocks to do this. You can do it with any um, thing that is of the same size. You could have a couple of jars. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna drop this down so we don't see a gap. And they have the same amount of tension on both sides. Now we know that the Z and the X and the bed are all level to one another. We have a nice square level here. We have a nice square level here and this is parallel to our bed. So now we're going to put on our Z axis uh, top holders and we're just gonna line up those nuts that we put on the back and we're gonna slide them into our channel here on the on the frame this takes a little bit of fiddling and I'm doing it backwards it's the first time I'm doing it backwards so bear with me once you are down you're gonna have to probably move this rods or these rods just a little bit so that you can maneuver those rods right into their pockets there we go. So now we know that that rod is nice and centered in there. We're gonna take our Allen key and we're just gonna tighten those up. And you don't, again, you don't have to be Hercules here. Just tighten them up because we are using sliding T-nuts and we're not using the um, other T-nuts that, uh, or the hammer nuts that actually turn. And there we are, that is now in place. And the last thing to do is put on our little cap piece. And that just dresses up the end of our extrusion. And that's it, makes a nice clean piece. So that's all there really is to putting together the X and the Z axis and making sure that everything is lined up correctly. I still have my uh, machinist blocks under here. If you don't have a set of these, you can always go to Thingiverse and print them off. There's a set on Thingiverse. Um, that you can make for yourself if you already have a 3D printer. If you don't and you want to get a set of these, they're available on Amazon. I'll put a link down below um, for this episode on where to get these on Amazon. They're not that expensive. I think they're only about $15 for a pair. Um, but they're very handy to have, especially when you're trying to uh, go ahead and level your, your uh, X and Z axis to your bed. Now, on this bed, we have no adjustments. So, in next week's episode, we are going to put together our extruder. And this extruder, again, this particular one is available on Thingiverse, and it has a BL Touch already, um, well, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it already has a BL Touch. There we go, that's, there, there we go already has the BL Touch mount for it, and we are going to use a BL Touch in this bed. We're not gonna use an inductive or a capacitive sensor. Um, we have all the parts for this. We, as you know, we've already put together our, our uh, hot end, so we're gonna install that next week. We're gonna put it onto the frame. Uh, we are also going to install our electronics next week, and we will go ahead and uh, maybe even get a chance to fire it up. So. Make sure that you come back, check out the other episodes that we've already done on this build to kind of give you a heads up on where we're going and how we're getting there. All of these STLs are available online. Again, when we reach the end of this series, we will put together a package which contains all of the STLs, all of the measurements, bill of materials, and cost analysis. Right now, we're thinking retail cost. If you were to go out and buy everything today um, from a retail outlet, you're looking right around six hundred dollars i believe we may be able to come in less than that but depending on the parts that you choose we are going to go ahead and put an mks gen l board on here it's a smaller board um, it also supports uh two extruders so we can go ahead and do that and it'll it has support for our bl touch as well and we are going to be using 21 or 2208 uh, tmc trinamic drivers on this particular printer so it's quiet just like a Prusa will be and uh, we'll go ahead and get all of the rest of the STLs printed off that we need to enclose our uh, hardware and our electronics and we'll put the um, PSU on the side as well. 
So, with that said, I want to thank the lovely Jess Corniching, who is in the house today. There she is. As well as I also want to thank, uh, of course, our benefactor here, who allows us to use this studio and gives us access to some of the parts um, readily that we need. And that is, of course, Spool 3D. Check them out today at spool3d.ca. They have everything that you need from printers, supplies, and all the parts and accessories you can need for your next 3D printer build or just to upgrade a printer that you may already have. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right. Print it with Spool 3D. With that said, I'm out of here. I'm Richard Cleveland. This is the first layer. You guys have been entertained, educated, and engaged with. So until next time, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. My little get started dance. Uh, oh, we are on. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. All right, three, <laughs> two, one.